That means by May 17th or April 15th, we have to file for an extension. <laughs> Ah, I'm married to an accountant too. So no, Sharon, you are right on time. Let some people get in here. I see the number ticking up. Yay. Um, I'm excited about today's lesson because to me, this is the crux of getting this thing together and having all the seams meet nice little pointies like right up here where the spool, where the blades come together in the center. We're going to work on that, and it's, I, I did it incorrectly, all right, and then I figured out what to do, and then it went pretty well together like a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. I mean, this is a super easy block, super easy, but that's, that's, the, that's the, the, the problem <laughs> right there that I'm pointing at, right there, the problem child. You know, I was setting this up. I have to tell you, we are in the height of, of destruction, <laughs> construction, destruction. The fact I'm even sitting at my sewing machine is this side short of a miracle. Hey, Barbara. So let me, what am I going to share with you today before we get going? Let me, where's the heck is that? There that is. I had a great weekend. I hope you guys did too. Well, actually, no. Well, yeah, yeah, it was good. But we've been moving stuff all over. Now, one thing I want to say that is kind of funny. Um, you know, when you're, I'm re-cleaning out stuff, I have basically gutted my sewing room. I mean, gutted. And I'll show you where we're at right now and what's coming up. But I found, but you know, when you start cleaning up, you find stuff. And uh, some of the stuff, like there was a whole cupboard full of my parents' stuff that I just couldn't deal with it. And I, I came across this yesterday, all this money, and I'm going to take it to the bank, but right sitting on top was this. Let me show you what was this. I was so excited, I couldn't stand it. It is, well, it is a commemorative coin. Come on, let's focus in here. Yeah. It is uh, Ronald Reagan. It's a dollar. Okay. It's not even 25 cents. It's a dollar. And so I thought, oh man, I'll bet this is worth something. So I get online and the first thing I find is that this thing is solid gold. Solid gold. There's the dollar. Uh, if you can see it. Yeah. Solid gold. So now I'm really getting excited because these are the things you hear about, you know, when you find these treasures, the value of this dollar coin is guess how much? One dollar. <laughs> but I'm not going to trade it in. I'm not going to trade it in. It's going to go in my jewelry box. One dollar. I am a rich woman. <laughs> I got an email from um, a, a, a Bonnie, I believe, and she found this quilt. And Bonnie, I'm going to tell you, I don't know the answer, but she found this, and I think it was her aunties or something, and she wanted to know, did I know the name of it, given I've got the Barbara Brackman book and all that? Well, first of all, these are the kind of quilts that make my heart go pale. And so I thought, well, you know what? I'm going to go, I'm going to write to Barbara Brackman and to Julie Silber because they're historians. And I sent it off to those two, and within 10 minutes, they got hold of me going, oh my gosh, this is fabulous, blah, blah, blah. But neither knew the name of it. And so um, she, uh, Barbara is guessing that it is, from, that it is from the South. That's what she thinks, it's from the South. And then Julie's, was, I think, dated to Louisiana or something like that. So I, I can't, I'm sorry, I didn't get back to you. Nobody knows. But these are, this is why I love antique quilts so much. I look at this and I go, man, would that not be fun to make? And then I look at all those little uh, triangles and I'm going, no, probably wouldn't. So, <laughs> but wow, uh, it looks as if those center circles are applique on. 
um, that cheddar in red was really, really big at, you know, the turn of the century and stuff. So this is a real, this is a real find. And honestly, Bonnie, I'm not sure if you ended up with it or somebody else ended up with it, but don't let that go to a thrift store or something like that. Don't let that happen. That is a wonderful piece. So I'm, I'm, I'm taking you through my misery and I'm telling you, this is champagne problems. So I'm not really whining, but I shared that our guest room is just a mess. I, I also put stuff in the backyard. Um, I mean, essentially this room is, is gutted. And, and the fact, again, I'm even at my sewing machine is huge. So this is my office right now. Um, the, the computer's gone, everything's gone. And today I'm going to move all this stuff here over to my table that rolls in my room. And then this was the thing that was just like, I looked at it yesterday. That's my fabric. All right. I've never shown it before because it usually looks like a train bus hit it or whatever. And John said yesterday, well, let's just get it moving because there's carpet underneath those baskets. So now this is my living room. <laughs> and I will tell you, I love this wire system. Absolutely love it. Um, the baskets come one rung, R-U-N-G, two rung, R-U-N-G, or three rung deep. And I like the two rung the one rung, uh, if you go, it's kind of on the short one. In the short one in the middle, there's a one rung on top because I couldn't do an even amount of two rungs. And I don't really like those because to me, they're worthless. Um, I like the two rung because it's I can get a lot of fabric in there, but I also uh, can pull it out of the cupboards and put it on my table when I'm working. The three rung... It, it's just too heavy and just stuff is going to fall into the bottom and that's the end of it. So what is happening next is I'm getting rid of the carpet. It's going to gross you out or make you feel better about yours. <laughs> but, ah, um, that's around the TV. People, kids come in here and eat and blah, blah, blah. And what I will tell you is that this carpet is 21 years old. <laughs> Well, I mean, to me, this would be like having carpet in your kitchen, yuck, or a bathroom with little boys in the house, if you get my drift. So I'm getting, there's this new product called, it's got, it's a vinyl, but it's put down in um, modularly, not like a big old sheet. It is super, it is the most destruct, indestructive, undestructible, you know what I'm saying? product next to say like a tile, which I was looking at. I was looking at, they've got tiles that look like wood and all of that. But then I thought that's too uh, hard to stand on. I don't want to stand on that. So this stuff is easier on the legs. And the reason I got carpet initially was because I used to baste quilts on the floor by hand for hand quilting. I would literally T-pin the backing in, lay the batting out, T-pin the top in, and then get on it and crawl and baste it. And then I couldn't walk for three days. Uh, now, with uh, 21 years later, if I got down, I need someone to come and get me up. So that's over. And the other thing with carpet too is that, so my little chair here is on rollers and it's, it's, it's a, it's a pain to get in and out, all right? So so that's next. So excited. Then I've ordered, then I can move junk out of, every, I can get the fabric back. I can bring stuff in from my sewing, uh, from my guest room, which I have to do just in time because we're taking the kids for a weekend in about a month. And Bill, who's doing the cabinets, um, said it will probably be done in a month. So I'm very, very lucky about that. Okay, people are, ch my YouTube is frozen. Well, John is working on it, Kathy. Um, so let's talk about what we're going to do next. Again, right here, this is what we're dealing with right in here. All right. And there's certain things you have to do if you want it to turn out like that so it will go. 
all right? Let me go back. Oh, the other thing is I did find my third camera, but I didn't have time to set it up. I'm, I'm, oh, I'm working in a little hole. Okay, something else, which I got a letter from Joyce. And she said, I don't know if this is a dumb question or not. Uh, no, Joyce, it was not a dumb question. I had to, let me turn this thing around. I had to go figure it out. There, Joyce. Right in here, it says LC. L C S C S. All right. And so I found in the front of the book what it is. It's a fat quarter jelly roll um, layer cake charm square. And what they've done in this book, this is the book, the quick and easy block tool. You guys know I love this book, like no tomorrow. They have yardage, what it pre-cut friendly. All right. And so this is working with pre-cuts. And I don't really understand what LC times half square for B. I, I mean, I, I don't understand that because I don't use um, layer cakes. I really don't use charm, charm squares and stuff like that. But that's what it's about. So I almost even had to call Liz, my editor at CNT, and said, what is this? I still don't quite understand. But Joyce, that was not a dumb question. That was right on the money. And I, I just, thank you. I didn't even see it. My eyes just glazed over it. And how you use it, I am clueless. So we, we made a bunch of these. And I am going slower. And I've gotten letters from people saying, yay, for going slower. So it's a, I, this is going to war, war um, get into a, like a so with Alex or something like that. This is going to change now that the pandemic is over. Um, and I'm not going to be rushing through during the pandemic. Well, I mean, we're still in a pandemic, but during the whole thing, we were stuck at home with nothing to do. And as life starts to start happening, we're going to slow down and enjoy the process. Okay. So using my eight and a half inch ruler, I squared this up to eight and a half. All right. Raw. It will finish at eight. Now, where's the little, oh, here, I use it as a bookmark. I asked you to prepare these last Monday. And how I prepared it was I used my Print and Piece Fuse Light and then I used my glue stick and finished this edge. This is the raw edge. This is the finished edge. And I will again go over machine applique today. But essentially what you do and what I did with the first one was, oh yeah, also you want to line it up to the side that's got all the pieces not the side that's long and skinny. Boy, I hope that's true. Yeah, that's true. So I'm going to line this up here. And this is what I did before. I just, I took, I found the center, found the center, put it on, line this raw to this raw, and I got myself in trouble. So I thought, okay, I have to really know how to mark this thing. So what I do, this is why I have this little ruler. Let me see, am I in frame? Come down just a little bit here. You can see here is my quarter inch, and this is my self, uh, Quilter Select self erase marker, which means it will come off with air within a couple days. So I'm going to go like this, and then I'm going to go like this. This is it. This, this, is, this is the, what do they call it? The money, the money shot or whatever. Oh, the cool thing about this marker, too, is let's say you mark it wrong. You can just take off the, you can let it dry in a couple days, it'll go away. Or you can just use this and it'll go away. Also, the cool thing with this is you can iron it and the iron will not set it. But that's not enough. The next thing you're going to want to do is on your ruler, you've got this little line right here. And I found it ever so useful to... Um, take this right here on here and then take my little marker and go like this. All right. So I want those three marks. I'm going to do the same thing on this side. My little quarter inch. All right. My little quarter inch. And then, da, 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 always takes me a minute. 
line your 45 degree. And of course you could use any ruler with this, but I found this little one just to be super duper um, handy to have there. All right, so now I marked. So now what I'm gonna do is, let me get this out of the way. Here we go. When I put this on here, okay, uh, let me move this. When I put this on here, see how, well, wait, okay, wait, hold on. I'm gonna get this side right there. I'm, I'm lined up to the raw edge and I write exactly on the money there, all right? I've got, let's look again what's going on, all right? And then I'm gonna go in it up I'm in trouble. It, it's 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 over too far. It just is. All right. So what I'm going to do is, and then I'm going to scoot it this way. Just scoot it. It's okay that these two pieces are not lining up. It's okay. So now I'm going to take my glue stick. And I'm going to glue it down. Yeah. I mean, it's it's even okay if it floats a little bit, honestly. It's better than having it chopped off. At least that's what I think for mine. Okay. Let me put a couple, little bit more glue stick. This stuff dries clear and it dries really fast. So always put your lid back on quickly like I'm not doing. Okay. Let's see how much it's off on the back. I think this will be kind of interesting because the most important thing is where it falls right here. Oh, it's perfect. <laughs> the chances of that are nothing, people. Are nothing. Are 0, 0.0. <laughs> so, yay. I'm going to go buy a lottery ticket. Okay. Now, okay, because I only have one camera, well, wait, let me go back to my face while I readjust on the sewing machine. <laughs> that, never that did not happen once on that quilt, okay? <laughs> Perfect. So what I'm going to do is, let's, we will look. I'm working on my Bernina 765, which was a um, limited edition. It's equal to the mid-range Bernina. And I'm going to teach you how I do it on my machine. And if you have um, a high-end machine or a, another brand machine, fiddle around with it. Uh, I wish I could say, you know, on this machine you do this, 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 this. But this is the machine I know, but it's kind of the same gist, okay? So is this what the add-a-quarter ruler was for, Sandy? No, the add-a-quarter ruler was when we did the flip and sew on the back of this so that we wouldn't have a ton of extra cloth. I would say go back two Mondays and you might find it on that video, all right? It's, it's, a, it's a version of paper piecing. It's a flip and sew. And by using the add a quarter, you just don't get layers and layers and layers of fabric. Okay, so um, thread. We are gonna do machine applique. You could very well do this by hand if, if that's what you want. I would do the applique before you sew the whole thing together because I'm going to talk about that at the end. I got a um, question from one of you and there was a little bit of an issue and I want to address that. What I love to do in real life and what I did there was I used my Quilter Select White 80 weight. It's super, super fine. I used it always on the bobbin, always and then also on the top, okay? But let's, another thing you could use, and I, I think I did with the flowers, I didn't wanna have to change thread every 30 seconds. So we have a beautiful monopoly, and I use clear, can't see it. Um, but for us today, I'm gonna use navy blue so that you can see it, all right? The other thing is, because everything is tore up, uh, Shelly Tobish has a wonderful way to do this applique, but my notes are gone. I can't, I mean, I, I'm, I am lucky to be here with a smile on my face. <laughs> so, 
not really. I love you guys. Okay, so let's take a look. Oh, the other thing I want to say too is I have mentioned in the past that if you're watching one of these videos and you go, that's it, I'm getting a Bernina that's over $1,000. I've been doing it wrong. Let me just tell you, this is the how it rolls. If you say, that's it, I'm going to go get one today. And I think they've got some great deal like I don't, I don't want to say what it is, but they've got something going on right now. They always have something good going on. Uh, I will send you that $100 rebate postcard, but it's supposed to be tied to the day you made the decision, and I did not know that. So if you go, that's it, let me know, and let me get it to you, and then you've got 30 days to get the machine, turn it in, and all that good stuff. Okay, so, all right. Now, I... I took down the light on this. How can I get it so it's not so bright? Huh. Is it upside down too? Yes. I, that stuff kind of matters. Can we back off? Sorry for the seasickness, guys. I'm going to tune it in. Oh, there. That's pretty good. Okay. So, first, okay. All right, so on this Bernina, there is what I call the quilter's playroom, and it's right here. It looks like a little quilt square. I'm going to go there. And now I've got all these different stitches that the Swiss guys decided we need to have as quilters. My two favorite stitches here are the single blanket stitch and the double blanket stitch. Ricky uses double, I use single. With this finished applique, I do not want it to show. That's the point of finished applique. This is not fused applique, this is finished applique. I must be very clear about that. So what I'm going to do with this, uh, this particular um, stitch is over to the side here, I am going to move, you can see that it moved right over here, all the way, oh, let me go there. I'm gonna go to that stitch, that always helps, right? And I'm gonna move it all the way over to the side, okay? And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to lengthen the stitch to about a 3.20 or something like that. And you can see on the machine that if it, that if it turns yellow, that's you, you've messed with it, okay? And now I want to make the bite much, much smaller. So let's watch that number go down as, oh, I'm going the wrong way, as I make this smaller, smaller, smaller. If you're new at this, do about a 1.0. I'm a trained professional. I can get smaller than that. But, you know, you just, you've got to have enough that this, oh, where's a pointer? That this right-hand side here floats outside the applique edge and the little bite happens. All right? And then I'm going to, we are starting and stopping in a seam allowance. So I'm not going to worry about, um, starting with a small stitch and ending in a small stitch. When we're doing the flowers, I will, and we'll discuss it then, okay? So the other thing, now I'm gonna come down here. I'm covering this so that you don't get seasick. Nice, maybe even a little bit more. I hope you all had a good weekend. So, you want to use, if you're on a Bernina, I think they call this the embroidery toe or something. It's like for fancy stitches. Ooh, that's not good. What's going on right here? Let me try something. Now oh, there's, um, let me run through this. Let's just, let's just go back to ground zero and try stitching with an ender and a starter. Okay, we're good. Go back here, back here. Yeah, the cool thing is on this machine, you can toggle between stitches that you've messed with and it's not going to, it will hold that default until, until you turn off your machine. All right, so I am, I gotta think about this. I got this crazy little camera right in front of me here. Okay, because I'm starting at a raw edge, I don't, again, have to stop start with anything. But I'm going to come up to this. Again, I'm using a navy blue thread. 
It's the only thing I could put my hands on. A bomb has hit this thing. See how it's writing on the outside edge? And the fact that I've moved my needle position all the way to the right makes it so that it's easier for um, me to drive it properly. Okay, I'm going to show off. I'm going to see if I can take it even a little bit um, thinner. Let me try point oh eight. Yes. Now, Shelly Tobish has another way to do this that is, again, exquisite. Uh, I, I couldn't figure out where it was on the site. and Maybe we'll go through that again sometime. I mean, I know now what she did. She doesn't like the way the stitch goes across and comes back in the same place. She thinks it makes it too bulky. And who am I to argue with her? Her work is perfection on a platter. The other thing that I do use on my Bernina is a hover mode, which means when I stop, this comes up. I mean, I love the knee lift, but I don't need it if I have it in the hover mode. And there's a trick to using that. I'm thinking one day I might just do a lesson on, on the things I love on my Bernina. And I'll probably do it like on a Friday as an optional class. I'm not trying to, you know, be a used car salesman or anything like that. But there's a lot of splendid little things on this machine that I use. Okay, I'm going to cut it. Again, I don't have to worry about finishing it up because it's going to fall within the seams. If that were in this monopoly, or if that were in this 80 weight, I'm telling you right now, you would not see it. I promise you, um, especially after it's quilted. So you're going to do this you're going to do this on two sides of every of every um, spool, of course, you know, on this side and this side and doing it on this side. Now, I got a letter from, let me go up here, a question from Trudy. Let's see if I can blow that up a little bit. Trudy had... Boy, my computer, I got to lighten this thing up there. You can, I don't know if that made a difference on your screen, but you can see there's what I would say ghosting or shadowing coming through. And so if that were to happen to you, if you see that coming, what I would do is I would, let me go back to me. Wait, I don't want document camera. I want me. Oh, I want to get rid of that picture. That's what I want to do. I would, I would cut this out, uh, cut out the fabric, cut it out. And you're like leaving a quarter inch seam allowance, cut it out. And maybe, you know what, maybe you want to do that anyways. And I'll tell you why. We did this on print and piece fuse light and, um, it will. I mean, this stuff washes away. It washes away about 80%. So I've just added another step for you people. Okay, so let's just cut it out right now. I like that idea. Uh, thank you, Trudy, for bringing that to my attention. So how I'm going to cut it out is this. I'm not going to cut out my print in piece. I'm just, just leave it in there. It's a foundation. But... I am going to cut like this, leaving my quarter inch, right? I would probably use a different pair of scissors if I could find them. <laughs> I can't even find my footstools that I always put my, cam my cameras on. I <laughs> oh. I don't like living this way. All right, again, champagne problems. Okay, here it's not, make sure. Oh yeah, see there, that's not good. That will show through. It's kind of like when you go and put a quilt top together, baste it, you wanna make sure you don't have threads all over the back. Yeah, I would do this. Yeah, we're good, okay? so. You will cut it out before we sew them together. 
And that is what we're going to do next. That's what we're going to do next Monday is sew them together. Okay, John's coming in with a bunch of questions. Uh, it's a number, yes, on the Bernina, it's the open toe embroidery. It's um, a number 20 foot. If your Bernina has dual feed and you have a 20D foot, that means dual feed, 20 dual feed, you must engage the uh, dual feed or it's going gonna, it's gonna to just ride horribly, all right? Are you sewing on the white fabric? Yes, that's what I'm doing. I'm sewing on the white fabric, okay? And you do it before you piece all the blocks together. So you're on the white and then it goes to the other. Yeah, yes, yes. So you, you yes. So you're on the white. You you the straight stitch is on the colored fabric. The bite is on the white. The bite is on the white. The straight stitch is on the other fabric. Okay? Yes. So, so, so John's learning how to quilt here. <laughs> so you're going along the colored fabric yes. and it kicks over. Yeah. So you're going along the color fabric and it kicks over. Okay. You want to learn to applique? Tomorrow. Tomorrow. <laughs> um, yes, remove your single hole stitch plate. And I did that. Oh, you guys, you're keeping me honest. Yes, make sure you've got your wide stitch plate on or else you'll be very sorry. <laughs> and you know, whenever you change stitches and you have, well, number one, on your machine, and I know a lot of brands have this, you can mark, you can override your own head. You can get in there and say, stop me if I have this throat plate on. Stop the stitch, okay? That, that lot, okay. I didn't do the straight seam yet. No, nope, you're gonna make 20 of these. One on each side, one on each side. And then on Monday, I'll talk about pinning these things together, okay? And how to get perfect little points. Now, the fact of the matter is on Monday, I'm probably gonna have to chop this in half and put them together because I know, I know I'm still gonna be in Problem City in this sewing room. So let's see, what else? Okay, hi from New Zealand, Jennifer. I have a Bernina 780, which I love, love, love. Would also love to hear your valuable tips. Yeah, we'll do that on a Friday, all right, you guys? Um, so for this step, you would recommend the monopoly or white on top? Yes, yes. Don't do any other color. I just did that to show you, all right? And, I mean, I did it with regular thread before I had my 80 weight, you know? So I just love this 80 weight so much because it... It um, hides so much. So let me look down here. Oh, shoot. Uh, I have a Bernina and will love to have some tips. So you don't do the straight stitch seam yet, correct? Nope. Nope, 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 nope. All right. Well, it looks like we're all good. Okay, so this is what's going on. Uh, for the rest of this week. And again, I'm not rushing this. I have other projects down the pipe that I'm very excited about, but I'm not going to just like that. It's too much. Okay. So for everybody, <laughs> I'm going to take you on a tour of our warehouse. And, and then on Friday, I'm not going to be here. I am going to be up at Chico at Cindy Needham's at a secret private retreat and we're going to make more little girls and actually my friend wendy's going to be there and she's going to learn how to make a little girl if you haven't seen that show i mean i keep going on and on about it there is a reason for that um print and piece fuse light is coming this week you know that oh some people have already gotten their print and piece fuse light oh but in our shop come here john no, no, come here. Come here. Come here. He has a PSA. A PSA? A public statement announcement. Okay. Is this about the printing piece? Yes. Oh. <laughs> Don't. They had shipped us a, a uh, mislabeled 
mislabeled. Uh, you, what you ended up was print and piece that you will use when we do a foundation paper piecing. So don't throw it away so if you got your wrong So we've taken care stuff. of those people who had that, and now we're waiting for our shipment of the good stuff, and that should be in this week. So print and piece should be, by the end of the week, you should who be able to buy Who told you that? It. Suzanne? Okay, well, she's the boss. <laughs> You'll meet her. You'll meet her on Wednesday. Okay, I'm going to go to the bank. We should play a game of how much money is in this thing. I, I just, I, I thought... <laughs> I'm rich. I got a gold coin. It's worth a dollar. <laughs> Have a great day, you guys. I appreciate you spending your time with me. Bye-bye.